dear students in this module we are going to talk about the different theories of migration that explain uh, this important aspect of human life that why do people tend to migrate from one place to another place migration is a very complex phenomenon and it is determined by the set of economic political social as well as environmental factors so it is also determined by the perception and behavior of the individuals concerned uh, first of all uh, let's talk about the Ravenstein's laws of migration interestingly there there is an inverse relationship between the migration and distance uh, for example the longer the distance the uh, minimum are the chances to migrate a majority of migrants move to the shorter distances only the migration proceeds step by step it is not usually being performed uh, just in a in a one go and inhabitants of rural areas have the greater chances of mobility for migration because as you know in urban areas we have a lot of amenities and facilities of life available so these can be a source of attraction for the people from rural areas as soon as their situation their economic situation gets better so they tend to migrate to the urban areas and migration is highly age selective for example younger people they tend they are more likely to migrate as compared to the older people and migration occurs mainly due to the economic uh, reasons however in the modern days we do find that uh, um, migration due to the education purposes is also pretty much prevalent among the youth and then we have the gravity model uh, it means that the migration between any two interacting centers is the function of their population size uh, overpopulation determines the emigration if a, there, a certain area possesses the high population density people would tend to migrate usually it occurs in the urban areas uh, underpopulation determines the immigration so this model was proposed by the exponents of social physics in the 19th century uh, usually the gravity model uh, has been considered applicable until the 20th century uh, but, but now since uh, new uh, innovations and new amenities of life are available in the urban area so people usually tend to stick to these urban areas because they find attraction in these amenities of life and they do not usually find the alternative sources which could uh, compel them uh, to go to the other areas the stufus theory of mobility uh, suggests that there is no necessary relationship between mobility and distance so he agrees with the theory that the distance and uh, mobility are inversely relatable availability of opportunities determines the migration actually the where you find more opportunities uh, you tend to migrate and economic factors and ideas of the fulfillment are very forceful motivation behind the migration and also we have the Lee's theory of migration uh, that says that migration is the net result of interplay between pull and push factors that's a very uh, prevalent theory in the modern migration literature and pull factors are the factors that attract a migrant to come to a certain destination such as the economic opportunities health opportunities business opportunities or maybe education opportunities and then we have the push factors that are uh, the factors that compel an individual to migrate to the new destination that might be a war or a natural catastrophe or a calamity or maybe the absence of certain life facilities for example if you are finding it difficult to find water or food in a certain area so you tend to migrate to another area the volume of migration varies with the degree of diversity in the area uh, of destination that where there are more facilities 
people are tend to go uh, over there the volume of migration varies with the fluctuation of economy as well so it is not always fixed that people would always be migrating to a certain area it would depend on the circumstances as well as the situation of facilities available over there so more the facilities are available and more people are tend to migrate to that area and migration also tends to take place within the well defined streams for example uh, where there is a lot of trend as we have seen that during the 70s and 80s uh, uh, there was a very current trend of that time to migrate to europe or european countries or maybe in the middle eastern countries to go to search for the uh, opportunities of livelihood and migrants responding to the pull factors at the destination tend to be positively selected and also we have the neoclassical theory it assumes that the labor markets and economies move towards the uh, a state of equilibrium it means that it considers the migrants as the rational actors they are not just acting based on whether push or pull factors so they rationally decide about the uh, possibilities of migration uh, by calculating their uh, the chances of acquiring the benefits of migration on a certain place and migrants move from societies where labor is abundant and wage is low so uh, as you have seen that the, there is a greater trend in the modern world to migrate to the developed countries as compared to the developing and underdeveloped countries because there are more opportunities more economic opportunities available so decision to migrate are taken usually at an individual level as compared to what is reflected in the other theories and also we have the migration systems and network theory that focuses on the nexus between people at the origin and at the destination for example if a person is uh, gone to europe he is more likely to call his other relatives to europe as well so this creates a nexus of communities and migratory movements are often connected to prior long standing links between the sending and receiving territories these connections give birth to the migration system and people move where they can rely on someone they already know for example people do migrate uh, to other countries if they they are usually being called by the people who are already there or maybe they are becoming the spouses to go over there and finally we have the word system theory that emphasizes on the migration from the peripheral to core countries uh, by peripheral countries it means that those countries who are economically dependent or who are economically less stable as compared to the core countries which are economically developed and more modernized countries so migrants move from periphery to core while the goods capital and machinery flow from core to peripheral countries uh, so these countries are the considered usually the economic hubs where most of the innovation is being produced where most of the innovative technology is available so they are usually attracting more and more migrants uh, because of having a lot more economic opportunities and uh, migration occurs due to the shortage of labor in those developed countries as well 